What a bullet! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's a Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And Burnley. And he's on the outside, comes inside, comes up a shot, oh what a goal, Manuel Benson once more, that is top class. Burnley have done it, fantastic, Clarence deserved the championship title, they've been the best side throughout the campaign, Burnley have won the second tier, what a fantastic achievement, the players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everyone and welcome along to the latest instalment of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Evans, ahead of this weekend's game at Turf Moor against Queen Park Rangers. Obviously a team we owe a lot to for beating us at the Turf last time we were in the Championship, which meant we could win the league at Ewood Park. Some say that we may, we may have thrown that game, but no, let's give credit to QPR. And thank you to them for helping us do that. But of course, I always have a guest of the opposition fan base on the show and I'm pleased to introduce Ben from the W12 podcast. How are you doing, mate? Yes, very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. You good? No, thank you for coming on, mate. We are recording this at noon on Thursday um, So, and I appreciate you're a busy man, so thank you for coming yeah. on. Um, but let's get into it then. Unfortunately, mate, we have to talk about your season so far. Um, obviously, it's, it's not been a great start, has it? 11 games in, you find yourself second bottom, one win all season. So it's, talk to me about your season so far, mate. Do we have to? Um, <laughs> uh, mate, if you'd have told me this this time, if you'd have told me at the start of the season, you know, we'd be in this position, I would have would have absolutely not believed you. Um, we had a great end to last season. I think we won seven of our last 13. Um, we beat Leeds 4-0 last couple of games of the season. We, we looked really good, beat Coventry last day. We looked in a really good place moving into the new season. We could have got rid some dead, got rid of some dead wood. Uh, Sifuentes could have brought, you know, had a transfer window, and brought in some players, and we were all looking forward to the season and growth. I mean, not necessarily playoffs or anything like that, but certainly not in a relegation battle again for the third year in a row. Uh, but we find ourselves in that position, um, you know, reasons why we signed sort of eleven players in the summer, all from. The, None of them had championship experience. I think maybe Ashby had a couple of games, but 11 players, six, seven or eight of them have been abroad, come from abroad. So I don't think, I, I think we always knew that, that that might, that would either go really, really well or really, really bad. Um, and so yeah. far it's the latter, which is unfortunate. Um, we're really just struggling to get going, mate. We had a really good game, beat Luton away at the start of the season. And it looked like we were going to get going. And then since then, yeah, we've looked really poor in games. I mean, look, we're not being outclassed by them. We're losing by the odd goal or two goals. No game that we've seen that a team has completely outplayed us or anything. We've looked out of our depth. We just cannot consistently put a performance together. We are being punished for every single mistake that we seem to do. There's a, just ends yeah. in a goal. And we're just not creating and scoring enough at the other end, which is frustrating. Yeah, fair enough. But when you look at the balance of player, then obviously you mentioned that these, you know, you brought all these players in without any championship experience, and that'll obviously contribute to that. Having said that, Burnley did quite well with that. Were our worry a couple of years ago when we were signing the likes of Zorori and Benson, but them two turned out to be absolutely class for us. So sometimes, like you say, it can work out for you. Uh, sometimes you can't. But what's going wrong on the pitch? Like, what is it that you're not good enough at, or 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 just awful at? Well, you know, um, we've. Style of play hasn't really changed. I mean, Martin's 
trying to. I mean, we, we were very um, big last season. We had some big lads in in, in the team, and, and and we were quite physically strong. And but this year we've gone for us. Looks like recruitment wise, we've gone for a, a smaller type of players um, that were not as physical, which I don't think is helping. Um, we've had injuries. Like Jake Clark Salter is huge to us. He's he, he's playing Saturday, but we've missed him for the past four or five weeks, which 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 hasn't helped. We've never seemed to win without him. Um, Colback's injured. We've had share out for the first two months of the season. So it, injuries to real key players has not helped. Um, we're just defensively, we're okay. We're making errors, and they just seem to. Our last our last five goals we've conceded has all been down to an error that we've done. I mean, you, you know, if you see yeah. them, they're quite comical. Some of them, and we're not we're not like I said, we're not creating or scoring enough goals, and, and we're really poor in centre midfield at the moment. Um, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, we we get overrun quite often in there, and it's not work the new players and missing callback. So we've got a lot of challenges all over the pitch, mate. Really, our fullbacks have not been great either. <laughs> so um, a lot for Marty to, to to work through to get us going. Yeah, fair enough. Obviously, you mentioned the manager there, Marty Sifientes, a couple of times. You know, he's quite well thought of, is your manager. Obviously, he came in last year, did really well, kept you up when you, you know, it looked a little bit hopeless at the start of the season. And to the point where when we lost Vincent Company, some Burnley fans were mentioning his name, saying, I won't mind him, he's done a very good job at QPR. I saw some other, uh, him linked to some other jobs as well. Um, is he making mistakes? Is he getting things wrong? Well, yes, I guess you can't only win one game in 11 and not, you know, mm. look at the manager to some degree of what decisions they're making subs have been a bit odd on, on, on occasions um, which hasn't been great he looks a little bit more pressured than he ever has you know you know when you can tell by the way he's acting and sounding in yeah. press conferences and stuff um, he's really highly thought of at QPR he's still got a lot of credit in the bank I think that that will quickly dwindle as we start moving into the winter months and if we're still down there not winning and you cut yourself adrift you know, it, it will soon disappear, won't it? You know, even the greatest have, have, have gone, have, have been sacked quite quickly. Um, but yeah, I, I think he'll, I think he'll, I think he knows what we need to do. I think he's tried to implement. We need that one game where yeah. everything goes right. Dembele, chair, a couple of the big players turn up, which they haven't done so far this season, and, and hopefully we can kick start the season. That's what everyone's hoping. A couple of these new players that we've brought in that are struggling to get going, we're hoping that they'll get used to the league and, and we'll be OK. I mean, we've spent sort of seven or eight million in the summer, which to a club like us, without premiership um, parachute payments, is quite a lot of money. Um, yeah. And we're not, and we're in a worse position and arguably a worse squad than we had last season, which would have felt impossible if you'd have asked me in the summer. Yeah, fair enough. Obviously, just sticking with the manager, how's the fan base with him at the minute? Are there any calls for him out or is everybody still supporting him? No, I think he's, I think, like I said, he's got a credit in the bank. I think questions are being asked. I think he looks a bit pressured. I think we've got some really difficult fixtures coming up. We've got yourself, Leeds, Sunderland, yeah. Middlesbrough, Stoke, all next five games, which is a really tough five games. Um, so if we get to the end of there and we're in a Different we're in now, I think he's going to come under a lot more pressure. It's always how you lose as well, isn't it? If you lose, we, luckily for him, we haven't been losing three or four or five nil. It's been quite close games and we've been in it and we've just made silly mistakes. So even when we start losing heavily, that 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 will have its toll. Um, but I think he's still got the majority of the fan base at the moment. Yeah, fingers crossed for his sake. I do. Work, I did look at your next five fixtures, uh, and you know, like, like you mentioned them there, us leads away as well. A couple at home as well, but you know, decent teams. Yeah. So I, I do worry for for him for the next five games. But fingers crossed, uh, he's given the chance to to get you out of it again because he did a really good job last season. We'll keep it um, tend to do better just, against the better teams, on, mate. mate. I don't know. We tend to we set, we tend to win, but we least expect it. Burnley away a couple of seasons ago, for for instance, yeah. uh, we beat Leicester. Last season, Leeds, like we beat a lot of the yeah. top teams, so maybe we've played all the teams around as a loss. So, <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, mate, we've we've lost four games in our last eight championship games. One of them was you, so you yeah. know it. You know it's it like... can be done, and, and and you were worse. You were, in my opinion, you were worse than them. Well, had a worse manager at least um, than what you were now. How Gareth Ainsworth managed to outclass, out tactic Vincent Company, I, I, I'll never know. But it happened. Um, pure but luck, yeah, mate. Let, let... pure luck. <laughs> It might have been, mate. Or I think we had 
half an eye on, on the game a few days later, like I said at the start of yeah. it. So if, if it weren't for that, we'd have won the league that day. But if it weren't for that, obviously we'd have won it. Uh, but we managed to win it at Ewood Park, which will, will live long in the memory. Um, obviously, um, yeah, it's it's what all fans dream of. But anyway, let, let's sort of like get into QPR and your, and your style of play because... I think a lot of fans, maybe yourself included, will be looking at this and thinking Burnley second, QPR second bottom. Burnley lost once all season. QPR only won once all season. Easy Burnley win. However, I think Burnley fans will be looking at it thinking QPR second bottom. That means they're going to come to the turf and try and frustrate Burnley. And if QPR try and frustrate Burnley, the chances are they will leave with a point in their back pocket. The amount of times that somebody's come to the turf and just sat back and we've not been able to break them down. We are struggling going forward at the minute. We look very good defensively, a little bit too slow in midfield, but up front, just toothless. And I think that is because of the service from the midfield. So this game worries me slightly, if I'm going to be honest with you, mate, depending on how you're expecting QPR to set up and play. So how are you We're expecting not... them to set up? Yeah, I don't I don't anticipate well we haven't sat back in any game and we don't we, we don't do we haven't done that under Marty. That's very much a Gareth Ainsworth sort of team so so I don't expect us to do that I mean we'll probably be a bit more solid I suspect or we'll try to be anyway um, and, and but you know we've we've our possession stats are really good so you know we keep a lot of the ball we pass it around the back we'll, we'll press so we're sort of the mid press team we won't press high up it's sort of once it comes into the middle we'll press so I don't yeah. expect we'll do that right but Having said that, the position we're in at the moment that we find ourselves in, it might dictate that that's how we have to play to get a result. But don't be surprised if we don't. Is what is kind of what I'm saying. Yeah, fair enough. So, how are you expect? Are you expecting you to come at us then, or, or is it just a case of try and keep the ball? Because uh, without sounding arrogant, I think you'll do well to keep the ball at Burnley because we do press quite well, and we will look to keep the ball. And yep. I know football isn't played on yep. paper, but we should be able to keep the ball better than you. And that then worries me that then you'll then sit in. And we will struggle to break you down. But obviously, you know QPR better than me. Are you are you expecting to to maybe attack think, us a little bit more, get your full backs into the game and get forward? I think it depends on the system we play. So we've been playing three at the back the last couple of games. Um, okay. And if we do that, I think maybe then it might be a bit of a um, sit-in job and, and try and get you on the counter. Um, mm. Before that, we've obviously played four at the back and we'll play the three up top, which is Chair, Dumbele, Smith. And they're quite quick and... With them, I don't, I don't think you, you're 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 going to be able to just sit in. Those are not the type of players to to do that. So, yeah, I, I, it's difficult. I I think I think that we'll. I will not say we'll have a go, but I, I think I don't think that we'll you'll we'll just sit back and you know tr, you know low block and you know yeah. and, and then you try and work for us. I don't think that's how we'll play. But um, the, the position we're in. You know, we played quite well on Tuesday. We played Coventry. We played a bit better. We drew one all. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's difficult, mate. We just lack that confidence. You'll see on. You'll see on at the weekend. We just lack any real confidence. Good players, but not able to pass ten yards, five yards. Really frustrating, mate. Yeah, it sounds like us in the first half against Hull, to be fair, mate. We were, at, not even just the first half, the first 60 minutes, 65 minutes, we were absolutely shocking. How we got a draw in that game and nearly won it in the end, by the way, uh, is astounding uh, based on that first 65 minutes. Um, I just want to quickly, you mentioned there some of your forward players who can be quite pacey. I think looking at that, it would make sense for you guys to play sort of like a counter-attacking style, maybe sit in a little bit and then try and hurt us, uh, which Blackburn nearly had a bit of joy with, to be fair. Uh, apologies for swearing, everybody. Um but I do quickly want to know about um, your better players and some players that we need to be looking out for that might hurt Burnley on Saturday. Yeah, so we've got, uh, I mean, we've got Elias Chair, uh, but he's been out for two months with a shoulder injury and he's only just coming back. He's had no pre-season, so he's really rusty. I mean, he, he had about three or four chances at the, last weekend that he just, just mm. didn't fluff them all. So, But he's really good. You know, you get him in and around the box, he, he can do something. You, we've also got Dembele, um, Jacomo Dembele, who was at Celtic, a young lad, he's really small, but really quick and nifty. And if if he can get going at you, he, he's a problem. Um, we've also, we've got um, Frey up top. Mick, Mick Frey, he's a, big, he's a big unit. He's six foot four, I think, six foot five. Interesting. Bold. Yeah. Um, he looks a bit like Voldemort. Um, that's what the Pompey fans were singing last Saturday. Harry, uh, Harry's coming for you. Um 
but but he's had a really good start to the season. But he was injured at the weekend at the, against Coventry at, at midweek, and and he's a handful. Like you know, if we get balls in the box, he will certainly be trying to get on the end of them, and he'll be trying to rough up your centre backs and stuff. So I'm hoping he's back for the weekend, but he's touch and go. Um, but those those three, and we, we've got um, a little um, um, Japanese lad Saito Saito um, who had a really good. He was our man of the match on Tuesday. Little nippy yeah. winger. So we've got a lot of those type of players. Maybe we've got Paul Smith as well, who's, who's lightning quick. It's just whether we can use them. Yeah, it's interesting because the only other time I remember as a season playing against a big unit up front was, again, apologies for swearing everybody, was against Blackburn. I can't remember the lad's name, but a big, massive unit up front. And we did struggle against him, to be fair. It, it wasn't great technically, but he held the ball up very well, was strong against the defenders. And we have some good defenders and he did, he did hold the ball well. So maybe you'll get some joy through him. You'll see, mate. He's literally massive, and he turns like a tanker. But if you can, <laughs> but 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 he's got he's he's all right. He's, you know, he he, he can play. Um, but if we if we gets isolated, then we're in trouble again because he's got he can't move quickly enough to you know get around. So, but you'll see if he plays. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, he, he doesn't really get into the game then for our sake, but that does worry <laughs> me slightly, especially with some of the, the nippy nippy lads. Sorry you have up front that he could then help uh, hold the ball up and bring them in play sort of thing. But we do have a good defence. We've got the best defensive record in the league as it stands. It was Sheffield United a, a few weeks back, but um, after four clean sheets in a row before Hull, uh, we now have conceded the least in the league. Um, you've touched on and briefly you mentioned some of the names that you've had um, injured and suspended, but is there any injuries or suspensions ahead of this weekend? Um, yeah, so I mean, we've got Jake Clark Salter back. So him and Steve Cook in the centre back will be the partnership, and that's as good as we've got. And when I talk about our best, better players, they're actually the best players we've got. I think are those two at yeah, centre back. Okay. They're brilliant. Um, so, so they're back. I mean, we've got Kenneth Powell out injured. He went off on Tuesday night, so so, so he'll. I don't know. Not heard anything, but he might be out. Um, Vicar Frey up top, who's our top goal scorer. He was out Tuesday, so he might not be in. Um, we've got Jack Cole back out as well, so he's he, he's un, we didn't we didn't know how pivotal he was until he's missing. Um, but he's not he's a long term injury, so yeah, maybe we've got a few out. Have, have you not, you've got a lot of injuries, haven't you? Yeah, we've got a few to be fair. Lal Foster's out. Uh, Mike Trezor, who hasn't played at all this season and was awful last season, to be fair, but we do feel that like, some fans feel that like he will be class if he plays in the championship. Uh, Sarmiento missed Saturday, uh, not Saturday. Yesterday against Hull, Wednesday, if you listen to this uh, at a later date, Wednesday against Hull. So we do have some. There's some more who, who I can't remember off the top of my head. Connor Roberts is back in the side now. He's had a few uh, weeks out. Uh, Fleming's back in the side now and scored last night. He's had a few weeks out. So it doesn't sound like it's as bad as your injury situation, but our main striker, if you will, there's a lot of question marks hanging over Lyle Foster, to be fair. Um, he's out. And one of the wingers that, that we would like to replace, um, Luca Coley-Orshaw, who I love, but has been absolutely shocking, is out as well. So yeah, it might be a few injuries on both sides, to be fair. Fair enough. But it does sound like you've got it worse. Actually, I just want to go back because you just mentioned their centre backs. Apologies for banging on the microphone, everybody. Um, you just mentioned centre backs. It wasn't that long ago that obviously you signed Jimmy Dunn. How he how, how is he getting on at QPR? I think he's playing right back for you, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. We call him Cafu these days, mate. Um, he's <laughs> the Irish Cafu. Um, he he had an ex. So basically, he he was he, he wasn't in the team much before uh, post Marty coming in he was sort of on the bench being used he, he was really struggling at centre back and we played away at Bristol City last season at, it was January February time and um, and he was brilliant <laughs> he was like, um, like before the game everyone was like we can't play Jimmy Dunn right back and he was brilliant and then he just went on an amazing run where he was just no one could get past him he was he's got those long legs he, he, he mm -hmm. scored a couple he scored nearly every other week Scored a worldie at home to Birmingham, like literally on the half volley, top corner in the 90th minute. Um, and he had a really good end to the season. You always knew inside you that there was that centre back calamity. Yeah, he's quite immobile at times, and mm. um, and that's sort of creeping in this season. He's not been the worst player by any means, but it, yeah, he's. He, I mean, he wins everything in the air, so he's an out ball, right? So if you put him on the right back. He gets forward a little bit and you ping the ball over and he, no one's beating him in the air, right? Especially because the centre backs are nowhere near there, so no one else can yeah. beat him. So he, so he's sort of an out ball that you can hit from, you know, and switch play and, and he's 
he's really good at set pieces and you know so he's he's a he's a, he's a handful but we sort of shoehorned him at right back and we yeah, he, he's not been in great form at the moment but you know fans love him he's a good lad yeah, to be fair, Burnley fans liked him as well. They didn't really play too much. He were coming through uh, when we had James Tarkovsky and Ben Mee, to be fair. So, with all due respect to Jimmy, you know he's never going to get in ahead of them two. Uh, even now, probably the centre-backs we have at the club now is probably not going to get in ahead of them. However, Burnley fans did like him. He came through the ranks. Um, and a lot of Burnley fans were disappointed we let him go. So, hopefully he has a terrible game on Saturday, though. But other than that, we, we wish Jimmy nothing but the best. He used, to, he used to like a lot of our Instagram posts, to be fair, did Jimmy? So, I don't know if he still follows us. Probably didn't. Um, obviously, let's look towards the game then. What sort of game are you expecting? I know we've sort of like already mentioned um, you know how we expect you guys to set up, but is there any confidence in the QPR ranks at the minute ahead of this game? No, mate, not really. We're the one thing we're lacking is confidence. Um, we're waiting for a game, like I said, mentioned to, to get us going, and, and, and we're hoping that when that happens, we, we will get going. Um, maybe a Burnley away, one of the bigger teams in the league, will do that. But I think we'll need to a lot will need to change if we're going to come away with anything on Saturday. It's football; anything can happen, right? We, you know, yeah, an early course. got. You know, if we go one nil down, I really worry about us. But if we can the lead then 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 possibly some we, we could we could go on and I've not seen anyone in the championship this year that's really that I've seen that has been amazing. Like I've been fairly every team's been okay. No one's really blown us away. I haven't so I, I don't know whether that will change on Saturday. I don't know if that's what you've seen, but it doesn't feel like the strongest championship this year than it has been. Yeah, completely agree. I do think the quality is a lot worse than what it was when we were last in it a couple of years ago. I think us, Leeds, Sunderland, you've got to include them in it because they are doing pretty well, to be fair. Yeah. Sheffield United are probably your better teams, but I'm watching Burnley last night and thinking, how are we second? Like, ultimately, we're second because of moments. You know, we have better players, which will ultimately keep us within that top four bracket come the end of the season. But I know it took us a while to get going under Vincent Company. But last last two years ago against Vincent Company, we'd have blown Hull away last night, but we were just second best for 70 minutes. And then when Scott Parker made the changes that he shouldn't have made pre-game and, uh, and brought Loren in, uh, in the midfield, um, then we were a lot better. So fingers crossed Scott's seen that. He's seen how poor we were without him in the midfield uh, and he does start him. Um, at the weekend. Uh, what are your thoughts on Burner then? You mentioned you've not really seen uh, anyone blowing the championship away and to be fair, I agree. I do think we I won't say we're in a false position because I do think we are, as I've just said, one of the better teams in the league, um, but I'm still astounded at how I've watched quite a few poor performances. We've dropped quite a few points. No, we, we drew away at Oxford, uh, drew at home to Preston, drew at home to Blackburn. That's three awful teams. Um, but, you know, I'm surprised to see us up there because of them results, if that makes sense. So, what are your thoughts on, on Burnley? I'm not sure if you've had a chance to watch us or anything, to be fair, this see, season. But Yeah, I've seen bits and bobs of you on, on Sky and stuff. And, and, and I always associate Burnley with having, at the moment, with having really quick, nippy winger, wingers that have got real quality. It might be that hmm. Savory and Benson season. I don't know why, but I'd still... Yeah, they, they still haunt me. Um, so, um yeah, uh, Zane Fleming is a good player. Every time I've watched him with Millwall, he's, he's caused us some yeah. some sort of trouble. Technically, he looks a good player. So you've been playing him up front, have you? As a false false nine? Or... Yeah, I've been playing him up front because we've we, we, you know we've been poor up front. He did, however, score last night, and this is the thing that frustrates me with Scott Parker. I understand it was quite late in the game, so Zian was probably a little bit knackered. But he's better in the 10, in my opinion, is Fleming. And then we brought a player on to go in front of him in the nine. And that's when Fleming scores. He scores a goal, arriving sort of like late in the box with a header. And then five minutes after that, Parker takes him off. And, and I do think he needs a run in the team in the 10 position with hopefully Lyle Foster in front of him. But obviously due to injuries, he's having to play up front at the minute. You've got Brownhill as well, who I think is probably one of the better players in the league, probably the best player in the league. So he's always a worry. Oh, they're so poor at centre midfield, so... I'm sure he'll get a chance or two on Saturday. Um, it, it, he'll be well it does up like there, a goal. Mate. He'll be well up there. I, I was, Scott Parker is always question marks over him, isn't there? But um, but I think the players you've got, you've got a really good defence, haven't you? Yeah, um, best defence. Statistically, the best defence in the league. Yeah. I'm, how's that Perez doing? I, I watched him at the start. So I thought he was a really good fullback. Yeah, it, it looked like you obviously must have seen him in that Luton game where he was absolutely <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. 
He was at, he got two assists. Uh, you know, he, he was fantastic. The same ball twice, by the way. Um, he, he's bet he's better going forward than he is at defending. Uh, he can be a little bit susceptible and maybe get caught out. Having said that, there was a couple of times where he was one on one with their forward player, and he made a decent tackle last night. So maybe he is getting better. <laughs> But um, it's interesting you said about Brownell because Burnley fans, I like Brownell and I always get stick for saying I like Brownell. However, uh, Scott Parker has um, this, well, he's the third manager that's done it, to be fair, this weird obsession of playing him in defensive midfield. And if you play him in like the 10, in my opinion, Brownell should be in the 10, Loren should be the box to box and then Cullen sort of like the defensive midfielder. That's how the midfield should set up. But for some reason, Parker, company and even Dice who bought him have all played him in defensive mid and he's much better in that 10. But he did play well against Sheffield Wednesday in that 10. Then he was moved a little bit further back last night. Again, not as good as he was against Sheffield Wednesday. So fingers crossed, Parker has learnt. He starts Loren, Cullen in the deeper role, Brownell in the forward role. But anyway, mate, let's get to predictions then. We will start wrapping it up in a minute, but let me know your prediction for the game, please, mate, and your reasons why. Well, mate, there's no way I could predict us to do anything uh, really um, based on nothing other than hope. Um, I suspect it will probably be a two 0 to you guys. If we can grab, if it's one nil to you, if, I mean, look, we've always a chance. If we if we can, you know, keep it tight as the game goes on, you just never know. You know, you get into the seventy yeah. fifth minute, and if we're one nil down or it's drawing or whatever, then then we might have a chance. But um, an early goal would just be terrible for us. <laughs> so. Well, I hope you don't score early. I don't think we have scored early yet this season. Not really counting the first oh, two God. games of the season because, it, to be honestly, mate, I, th- I think I think I think this is going to be a little bit closer than you think. I mean, I've sat here with Preston fans, Plymouth fans, and gone, "Yeah, we'll, we'll beat you easy, three 0 mate." But from what I've seen so far, we're too cautious. We're too slow in possession. We did look better against Sheffield Wednesday in that second half, but I think it helped that we were two 0 up at that point, and you know. The first goal, by the way, came from a Sheffield Wednesday mistake. The second goal, they another mistake, which we then capitalised on. But if, if you don't make the mistakes and you do keep it tight, I think we'll struggle to break you down. I am going to predict a 1-0 Burnley win, but I don't think it's going to be you know as easy as you think it's going to be. The, the fact that you've mentioned this big unit up front has worried me slightly. The fact that you've mentioned you've got some tricky wingers has worried me slightly. We've, we've not been great, mate. Like we, we are second. And I know a lot of fans in the Championship will swap position with us at any point, but we haven't been great. And I think maybe we've been spoiled a little bit with that Vincent Company season. Um, but yeah, obviously, the, the overriding emotion for me at the minute is frustration because you know it was literally last night when I watched that whole game. So I think maybe I'm I'm leaning more towards frustration than I am happiness because of that. Um, but yeah, Parker made some mistakes last night uh, and I'm hoping he's learnt from them. I do think ultimately we'll have the edge. Because we're yeah. at home, you know, because we've got the better players. Um, but yeah, there are some worries for me, uh, if I'm being honest with you. Um, but yeah, we'll end it there, mate. I uh, just want to say thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Before I do press end recording, do you want to let everyone know where they can find you and all your brilliant QPR content, please, mate, if they want to have a quick watch? Yeah, sure. Yeah, W12 podcast, um, just everything QPR, really. We've got some ex players, current players. Um, yeah, just some lads chatting QPR. Um, so, so give us a listen. We're on all social, uh, on all social media and, and, and yeah. um, podcast platforms. Yeah, current players. Yeah, that's the dream, isn't it? Burnley Football Club. If you're listening, answer some emails, please, mate. That would be the dream. Uh, Russell, answer your emails, please. That would be the dream. But thank you for coming on the show, mate. It's been a pleasure. Good luck for the rest of the season, but obviously after Saturday. You too, mate. Cheers. <laughs>